How's everybody doing today? Let's see, share the screen. Share my screen, not their screen. There we go. Everybody got the screen share? Basically looks the same. Chat popped up where I can see it again. So far, so good. <laughs> but I like to hear. Bido started trading today, huh? That's that ETF. Wife says she wins. I think we all win. All right. Five minutes. Start at the top of the hour. Everybody have a good trading day? Looks like Bitcoin's about to make an all-time high. Awesome. Great to hear. Great days. Great days. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bitcoin futures are, I mean, a lot of ETFs are based off the futures, not off of the actual underlyings. Thoughts on HUT? We can cover HUT briefly. Tiny loss, but tripled your target yesterday. That's a it's respectable new. Got to keep your losses small and your wins running. I'm pretty stoked because. Just a little bit before I came on here, I figured out that my Mara position, M-A-R-A, -A, is up $147,000. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> and Kimberly says, woohoo. <laughs> yeah, on Mara, yeah. We can discuss some of my bigger goals on Mara, maybe. Let's see, somebody asking for the link. Hold on one second. All right. About three minutes, we'll get started. Yeah, I'll cover my Mara outlook. I mean, that's my it's kind of a big position going right now. It's going to be my million dollar trade. I can feel it. Anybody that knows my story, last year, there were a whole lot of trades that went into the millions I made last year. Mara might be the single trade that makes me a million dollars. And what I got to say it might sound a little crazy on Mara. So, yeah, we'll get to it here in just a minute. We're going to start top of the hour, about one minute. Just kind of chit chatting with everybody, chatting with me in the chat. <laughs> I'd wait. I uh, I don't know. It's it depends. we I'll I'll go through it, Karen, and you can make your own decision. Hello, L. Good to have you. I'm I'm not a very good day trader, so I'm mostly swing trade. All my big money is swing trading. Hey Diana, good to have you in here. Thought you're gonna miss it. Hey Terry. Hey, you gotta start somewhere. That's a, another one of my followers said he's only up. You know, he was bummed he only had like 30 shares of Mora, and I told him you gotta start somewhere. Yeah, there you go, Jeff. That's a that's a pretty respectable gain right there.
Yeah, we're gonna we'll talk about more. Yeah, that that UT game was rough on Saturday. Yeah, I got good people working for me, Shane, or working with me, and they're a great great team. If you have any problems, they'll, they'll try to they'll do their best to type, to fix it. And if they need to ask me something, they'll ask me and and uh, do what we can. All right, we we are at five o'clock. How's everybody doing? We got over 150 people here today. Awesome. Let's get started. So. Check it out. Talked about ES, S&P 500, needing to break the 618 to get moving higher. So right now, the next resistance will be the prior high up here around 45, 45-ish, you know, plus or minus a few points there, 45, 44, 45, 45. And then above that, I expect a, you know, we could get there quickly. Could just take a couple of days to get to 4,600. So. That's a, uh, it's pretty big for the S and P 500 in Q. Bounced right off of that 144 EMA. That uh, watch broke back above, solidly above the 618 yesterday. Moving up today, we, we may find resistance when we get to 15. Uh, Was it 750? 157? No, 15, 157. Basically, it was the prior high. We may see some resistance as we get in that area, um, breaking through. Put us up to the 16,090 area and then 16,600 above that. So that's just working the fibs off of this retrace. Those could go fast. I mean, we could see that in the next couple of weeks. So, right before the close, I did go long some Apple calls out to not the regular November expir expiration, but that last week of November. Um, I did the 155 calls for about a dollar sixty, almost a dollar seventy. So that's something you're interested in. I'm not saying do it, but that might be something to look at. All right, we'll look at the Apple chart itself. A A P L. It is coming up into this resistance zone I was talking about, breaking firmly above that. We could see all-time new highs running up here. All right. So that's what I'm seeing on Apple and NASDAQ right now. The big one everybody was super excited to hear about coming into it was Mara. So let's talk about Mara a little bit. Mara is riding on the back of Bitcoin, which I don't know, did it just make an all-time new high? Nope, still running about $500 shy. So we're about $500 shy of an all-time new high on Bitcoin. Right up there close. Closing above that, very bullish for going to the eighty to $100,000 area very quickly. Yeah. We're already two-thirds of the way there off the bottom from back here in the summer. So Mara, the big news for me, right, you know, I was doing my numbers near the end of the day there, and uh, I figured out I'm up about $147,000 on my Mara position. My entry back over here. So, yeah, I'm, I've, I have a few positions from all the way back over here at eleven dollars. Now, let's get that off of there. Where is Mara going to go? Now, just looking at the short term here, these this current pullback. We're reaching up to the 1618 level of this pullback we had in September. That's going to top out somewhere near the prior high around 57 to 58. So we may see with that confluence of levels right there, we may see some resistance. You know, put a little moving this purple arrow off of there. I put a little oval over here. We may get there faster than my little oval even predicted. So we may see some consolidation in this area until. You know, maybe through earnings, but maybe not. Maybe we blast right on through there and we don't see any slowdown until up in this area where these three fibs are between uh, 73 and 85 area. So this could be our next resistance area right in here. Get my oval put in there. 
Now, moving on through that area, gets us up to 118 and 156 on up there. Now I have some lofty goals in this 252 to 375 area. That's my ultimate like big term goal right up there around 255. Once we get there, I think that might be the top for a while. And it could come all the way back down into the 20s after it reaches that high. I'm not gonna speculate on why it might do that, but that's how the price patterns work. So we, you know, right now, I've got some other, I got some other charts that I do some other type of Fibonacci on. It's not just what you see on here, but 255 is my has been my target for a while. So that's on the low end of this oval here. Yeah, we're looking at 255 probably since they're not going to get all their miners online till at least Q2 of 2022 is what they were saying. That's probably into 2022 before we see that kind of price. And my my long term options are out to 2023 right now. Just to be completely honest, straightforward, full disclosure, I have January 2023 calls. So it's your decision right now, short term, near term, however you want to say it. I'm expecting some resistance as we come up to here. We may see a bounce back down off of that level. So you can get in today, right up to that level, get out, or be cautious on a move back down to this level we're at now. You could. I'm not saying do it. I'm not saying don't do it. You need to make your own decision at this point. The best entry was. Of course, 10, 11 days ago, after we bounced off this 144 EMA right here. Now, I'm going to, I plan on holding through some swings. Um, I, have, I have great positions, and right now it's about to turn into uh, long term capital gains. So, why would I unload 8,000 shares right now? All right. The other question was HUT. What do I expect HUT to do? It came right up to its all-time high from February. I drew this orange box off this tail, and brought it over here. And it's been kind of a resistance for since early September. It came right up to the top of the box and bounced down. It needs to break out of the top of the box. That would be a confirmation of an entry getting out of this box right here. So breaking above the prior high, Super bullish on HUT. And I'm expecting that zone right there, which is 20 to $30. Mark, it's really a matter of uh, your, your, your risk tolerance and affordability. Um, I'm mostly in shares. I have some options out to 2023. I don't have anything that's shorter than 2023 as far as options goes on Mara right now. Yeah, we can pop up Riot and look at it. It did have a, it's, it's still in my stuck zone. Although when you adjust this line to low right there, that it, we had in July, we're just starting to break through it. So breaking back above, you know, the this trend line connecting the lows here from, Back in May and back in July, coming across. If we break above that trend line, that can be bullish. And the 618 level is right there too off of this retrace. It's getting back through there. And we'll have to break through this 618 level from this bigger retrace back over here. Where we were having trouble getting up in there. So it's got a lot of work to do. Riot does. I've been doing covered calls on Riot and making quite a quite a fair return so it's uh, been a really good covered call stock lots of premium on riot implied volatility all right avir that was one that got hit with some news today big drop on failure of the phase two drug trial for antiviral COVID medication. 
they're going to pivot. I don't know. It could, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say anything about that right now. It's busted all my technicals. It's lower than I would expect to see. Some people think that's a value play. I'm not sure right now. Um, I don't have anything. I don't have anything to add. Um, I'll talk to my echo trades people tomorrow about the echo trade, but right now, just on a big time frame daily chart, that's way down below everything. So if you're in echo trades, don't get too concerned. Come tomorrow to the live session. We'll talk about it. All right. Russell is a small caps. It's stuck in the middle still. Got this trend line coming down off the highs, trend line coming up off the lows, stuck in the middle. So small caps still not looking good. Oil, I made a heck of a call back in July that I thought UCO was going to be a good play on a run for oil. And it looks like oil is well on its way to that 88 level. So, Kathy, your question about covered calls, just stay tuned. We're going to launch something on November 2nd. I'm going to talk more about it next week. We're going to, we're launching a, a product for covered calls. So it's coming up soon. Don't hold your breath, but hold your breath because it's coming. <laughs> you guys have asked. I have a, a verified 95 plus percent win rate on my covered calls. So gold, not looking too hot. So those that were asking about gold yesterday, if you came to the session and asked me about gold yesterday while I was giving my pitch, then uh, this is why I'm not a big fan of gold right now. This is a downtrend. And it, can't, it, it did not break through the downtrend line. In fact, it bounced right off of it, holding right there above that support. But if it breaks back through that support, we're going to see you know, a highly likely return to this low and possibly a lower low than anything we've seen so far this year. So, yeah, I can pull up boil and UNG, sure thing. Boil, well, that looks like she's going, she's pulling back here. I made some projections here before. That failure to break higher right there definitely looks like it's got to set up to go lower. Let's see, zoom it up just a bit. A little better. Get some of my arrows out of the way here. So this right here, be a one. Snap to the bottom, two, three. Looks like we may see a price down to 55 or even 43 on boil. Doesn't have to, but it might. And then U and G. Got kind of the same pattern going on. Bounce right there, right there. This one's a little closer to support at 1690. And I've been, been seeing some news, some projections that um, natural gas could be 50% higher coming into this winter than it was last winter. So, all right. Kind of sticking to my themes here. Ethereum has been lagging a little bit. I think she's waiting on the Shanghai fork. If you're not familiar with the Shanghai fork, that's where Ethereum is like the, the people that control Ethereum are basically gonna force everybody from Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0. They're gonna create a what they call a mining bomb and it's gonna force everybody to move over to proof of stake. FTNT was, <laughs> my buddy Matt Fettig and I were doing a, an echo trade on the backside on FTNT and we bought one week <laughs> shy of options. And this week it was hitting target one and target two and ours it both expired worthless. So that was a bummer, Mike. But Ethereum, I see us near term gonna target this area, but right now it's having trouble breaking above the high from September. So I can pull up the FTNT chart real quick. This was an echo trade hitting the target, hitting target two right there today. Beautiful little thing. I did trade that and 
I lost 100%. Didn't buy enough time. If I bought one more week, it would have worked. All right. Any more cryptos anyone really look, wants to look at high time frame here before I move on? So that would, yeah, we can pull up ADA real quick. All right there. Doge, I don't have good things to say about those right now. We can talk about it. ADA still stuck in the orange box. So it gets out of the orange box. It's probably going to touch that 144 EMA before it bounces. This arrow just moves over a little bit. Orange box moves over a little bit. Probably going to hit that, or that 144 EMA before we get a bounce. Time frame, um, they moved it off to November. They were going to do it in October. They moved the Shanghai Fork to November, I believe. Um, that's one of those things you got to Google and find out. It's a developing situation when they're going to release it. They may push it off to December. All right. Coin has not had enough chart history for me to say a whole lot about it. Kind of stuck in this range right now. Just came up to test this prior high right here. Held that low right there. I was kind of pre predicting that it might break lower. It did come down, but it didn't break below the trend line. Bounce right back off the trend line, right back up. It may hold this trend line. It may, it may break above the prior high, but hold this trend line it's got going on right there. Just have to watch. That's still a kind of a corrective pattern, if, if you know. I get wave speak at all. All right, a couple of things I wanted to highlight while I have everybody here. I have some new stuff on my YouTube channel. I've got a small account challenge going. Uh, City of Knoxville sent me my tax bill. I got it laying here. And I took that money and put it in a small account, waiting for the deposit to clear. I'm going to try and trade it. So if you're not, if you haven't been watching, check out my YouTube. If you're interested in a small account challenge, it's you know right there. I can share the link inside the chat. I'm going to do a small account challenge. You can watch it. Um, if you're interested in following along, there's a if you want to do exactly what I did, I, I opened a Webull account. I've never had a Webull account, so I opened one, and I've got the link. And you can go to it right there in the description, and uh, you can open an account, get free stocks, and trade along with me. Um, I put $998 in the account, and as soon as it clears, I'll make the first trade. They wouldn't let me. They loaned me money to trade crypto, but they wouldn't let me trade options, if you can believe it. So that was just crazy to me. If you're if you don't know how to get to my YouTube, it is jeffreytrader.com. Put it in the chat slash YouTube. Right there. Yeah, so if you didn't get anything, Sheila, then email in to support or put your email in the chat here, just the host and panelist, and we'll get somebody on making sure you got, make sure you get the documents that you bought. But Friday, I'm going to talk about it here in a few minutes, but Friday, I got a class. Don't see the link on my chat because I just did the wrong thing. Hold on one second. Didn't put it to everybody. All right. Here's my YouTube channel right there. JeffreyTrader.com slash YouTube. And then here is the small account challenge. Bill can't copy. Good grief. So sorry. JeffreyTrader.com slash YouTube. Go there. Click on the small account challenge. JeffreyTrader.com brings it up to this page right here. JeffreyTrader.com slash YouTube brings it up right there. No, but we build challenge is not crypto. It's a small account challenge. Watch the video. I'm going to trade that $998. I'm going to, the seat in Knoxville was offering a 1% discount. If I pay by the end of the month, I'm going to try to beat there by the end of the month by the time the bills due in February. So it's going to run from now through February. How much money can I make? And I'm going to do it relatively safely because I still want to use that money to pay my taxes.
the crazy thing was that Webull enabled me to trade crypto with that account and the deposit didn't even clear. They're going to loan me money to trade crypto. I just thought that was insane, but they won't let me trade any options. So I have to wait for the deposit to clear before I can trade any options. <laughs> yeah, weird. Yeah, that's weird to me. Like, yeah, we're going to let you trade the most dangerous thing out there, crypto. <laughs> Yeah, no logic. I don't know. I don't run Weeble. <laughs> if you want to follow along, go in the description of the video. You can open a Weeble account. You'll get two free stocks. I don't get any. I mean, I'll get two free stocks if you get two free stocks. But um, follow the video, OKGs. I'll show you exactly what I trade. Yeah, we believe Chinese owned, so I'm not putting crazy stuff in there, but they have some kind of Chinese ownership, but they still play by SEC rules. And it's Apex is the back end clearing. All right. I've already got two episodes on there. So as soon as my deposit clears, we'll have a third video coming up. And there's already two on there. Let me see a little preview of the second one there. All right. I I have no idea on their crypto. Um, they just enabled my account for crypto. I wasn't jumping in on anything for them yet. Um, I'm going to start out small and, and easy. I only have $998. I don't need to lose it because that's what I was going to pay my city taxes with. Webull is W-E-B-U-L-L. We bull, like bull market. We bull. It's right there, we bull. Throw the link in the chat if you're interested. And everyone right there. Whiskey, Echo, Bravo, Uniform, Lima, Lima, we bull. Fund your account with $8. And they'll give you a free stock. Well, they, oh, they give you a free stock just for opening the account. And then if you fund it with as little as $8, they give you another free stock. If you trade, make a crypto trade, they give you a, another, I think, $5 worth of Shiba, Shiba coin, <laughs> the Doge killer. Anyway, somebody asked for Doge. It reminded me. Right now. Those came up to the 144 EMA, bounced down. That looks bearish to me. So we're kind of stuck in between this orange box right here and that 144 EMA. We either, if we can break above the 144 EMA, we're going to go up. If we can't, then it's down. There's a little bit of resistance right there, all piled up from the prior high. And now we got this high. So. Doge has some work to do if it's going to go higher. I, I, I'm no Webull expert. Go to Webull and check it out. Um, I don't know about credit cards or whatever. I I made a and I hooked it to a checking account and made an ACH deposit. Is what a um, automated clearinghouse. And it's going to take a couple of days. So, well, 144 EMA is one of those things that I watch. It's Fibonacci based. A lot of people like the 200. I like the 144. I find it's uh, it holds more often. Anyway, so I have a friend of mine that is also doing a small account challenge, or she's just doing a stock trading challenge based on Elliott Wave stuff. If you're interested, she said I could throw up a link for her to for people to come over and join her for free. It's all free. She's just gonna do it and trade and you can watch her trade and ask questions so right here in the chat it's on discord there it is she's not selling anything right now she's just doing a small you know a trader challenge she's going to record videos and put them on youtube similar to this so if you want to come watch that so doze right there dropping AVGO, you want to see that one? Yeah, that's uh, coming up. 
to that prior high right there. Get above there is bullish. Not getting above there could be bearish. It's when you're going to watch and see. If it breaks above, it looks like in the post market, breaking above. Maybe breaking above. Post market. Uh, it's just stacking the prices. So that one, breaking above that prior high right there. Bullish. Where would the target be? Run the FIB. Next up, 520, above that, 534. All right, we're about to the end of uh, the free session here for today. So I'll pull up a couple more. Tesla, TSLA. Looks like we're kind of reaching some resistance here at the 2618 of that prior pullback from back here. Kind of gone exponential. I expect it to kind of retrace back to the pivot, possibly, maybe. This could be a support zone right in there. All right. So I appreciate everybody coming out of the trader room today. Thank you for joining me. There's one more thing I want to discuss this afternoon before we take off. Right now, the markets are maybe a little uncertain. I mean, we're kind of, we've been sideways for a while. They climb higher on positive earnings, then they drop lower on bad housing announcements or, you know, crazy job employment numbers or whatever, but they've been stuck in neutral, waiting for a clear signal. I mean, we're not really higher on the futures, you know, as we discussed a few minutes ago, you know, ES, it's, it's been down. It's not at an all-time high. It's, it's been in a correction and it's just kind of sideways for a month. So, for better or worse, I think there's a signal that might be coming up in about three weeks. And I want you to hear this clearly. The Federal Reserve has the authority to spark a stock market crash as quickly as just flipping a switch. And they may have no other choice, but you need to know why I think there's a possibility. You need to know what I'm going to do about it. And for that, I have a simple answer. I have the crash protection live call. Some of you in here have already said you bought it. It's coming up this Friday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. And I'm gonna talk, I'm, I'm gonna host that special call. I'm gonna detail everything that I did during 2020, during that crash. I'm gonna show you what I did, how I traded it, why I traded it. And then we're gonna go through what's about to happen and what you need to watch and some of the news places to watch to be aware of what's happening. We're going to go through that on Friday. And then I'm going to go through the, the combination of trades that were the biggest, you know, some of my biggest trades I've ever made in 20, you know, that I'm with the profits I made in 2020. We're going to go through those. You know, it was a whole combination of trades. We're going to go through them. And that close class alone will be virtually priceless when the next big crash comes. But I want to overwhelm you with value. So when the crash comes, you're going to get a personal text alert. You know, I'm going to send out a text alert that says, now's the time to be looking at the X, Y, and Z trade. And I may even host another live class just to go through exactly what, where I'm positioning when, when the time comes. So you get access to all of that today for less than you might pay to heat your house for a month this winter especially with that natural gas going up. Like I said, I want to blow you away with value. So I'm also including the Crash Protection Manifesto, where my team and I worked hard to prepare, prepare a crash protection manual for you. And it includes the top 20 companies to avoid as they're about to flush hard, a bankruptcy blacklist, companies that should have gone bankrupt during the, the COVID crash but didn't, and possibly will go bankrupt. And then the new trader-friendly stocks, at least ones that I've picked out preliminarily for 2022. And last but not least, my number one potential to, you know, my number one trade to potentially profit from that crash. And we'll go through that on Friday. I'm not done yet though. I'm also gonna give you the crypto summit, just in case we get runaway inflation, how to protect yourself with crypto. And it's my one stop for all my biggest crypto plays. 
Plus, you'll get two awesome reports on top of that, the number one cryptocurrency to trade right now, and how to cash in on the crypto craze without ever leaving the stock market. A hint is we've kind of talked about it a little bit today. So you also get VIP customer support. All that is available for $297 to get that text alert and be on my list when I'm placing the crash protection trades. So I don't know if I've off ever offered more value than this in one package, but this is the deal today. It's not magic bullet. You'll have to do work yourself, but I believe with me on your side, it's the best chance that you have at surviving a coming crash and probably, maybe, possibly even coming out ahead. So if you're ready to join me, go to jeffreytrader.com slash join, call 321-888-3961 to talk to somebody and they'll help you out. We're coming up on the end of my 30 minute Tuesday session. We'll be back again next week. So if anybody has any questions, I'll follow it up now, but we're gonna wrap this up quickly. I'm gonna go through everything, everything I'm gonna trade on Friday. So if you want to join me, jeffreytrader.com slash join 321-888-3961. And like I said, next week we're gonna have some stuff on covered calls. So get ready for that stuff. Tuesday recordings are on YouTube. All these Tuesday calls right here on YouTube. They're called weekly appreciation webinars. We have the October 5th and the October 15th, and we'll have the October 19th right over here when we get it posted up. Updates in the small account challenge will be up here. And then I also have a series that I've been doing with my wife that's up here, the boss. <laughs> this is a crash protections thing. Like it's not just gonna be one year, it's gonna be when, not, when the crash comes, like whenever it comes, that's, it's gonna, it'll cover you through then. The recordings of the class from Friday will be up forever. If we need to update periodically, we'll update it. Rob, you're gonna have to tell us your email you need to have updated. What'd you have it as? What do you need it updated to? Or if you don't have it, if you don't think it's right, tell us what to change it to. The trade alert will be one May, you know, when the crash comes, you'll get that at least one text alert. And I may do a live session just to make sure we catch everybody up to speed, just in case it's been a little longer than I think it will be. But I think this could be coming up in as soon as three weeks. All right. And we've been preparing material and we're, we're continuing to prepare material for this. So I want everybody, like we're gonna walk through all the trades I did in 2020. And we're gonna talk about them and why I did them. And then we'll, we'll talk about where I think the opportunities are for this next upcoming thing, what the event is, what to look for, what, who to listen to, when to know it's coming. All right, Rob, somebody on the team needs to check for Rob's message up in the top of the chat since he doesn't want to throw it up there again. This chat's long. <laughs> As we move along on these Tuesday sessions, I'll cover a little bit of Elliott Wave. My, my friend that was doing the challenge on Discord, she is an Elliott Wave master. Oh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the trades I'm gonna do in this small account challenge. You have to tune in and, and watch. The best opportunities I can for the safest money. That's what I'm gonna do. And that's on my scale, not on necessarily somebody else's scale. I'm gonna do what I do. All right. Awesome, Linda. See you next time. If you're in Echo Trades, I will see you tomorrow.
for the regular live session. Glad to have you all here. Go to jeffreytrader.com slash join, 321-888-3961. See you guys next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>